Yo, what's up? In this video, I want to talk about five ways to level up your coding skills in 2022 and get hired even during the economic depression, economic recession, whatever the hell is happening right now. I want to show you what are the actual things that you have to focus on to build up your skills and to have the confidence to apply for a job and to actually keep that job. The reason why I'm saying you have to keep that job is because so many people are getting in and they don't have enough experience they cannot keep up and they get burnt out and they either get fired or they quit themselves uh, in order to find a better job or better opportunity so with that out of the way the first thing that you need to figure out is your weak points problem is that so many people focus on getting better at what they are good already and that's fine you should double down on your strengths but the reality is that you are as good as your weakest link. And let's say if you wanna become a front-end developer and you study a lot of algorithms, you get really, really, really good at algorithms, like insanely good, but your job is to be a front-end developer. And if your CSS is lacking behind, if you cannot create layouts, if you cannot create beautiful charts, etc., etc., then you are gonna shoot yourself in the foot. So your first job is to figure out what am I not good at? Because if you find out what that problem is and you attack it directly, you level up immensely. Not only you'll be able to produce uh, really good UIs, you'll also be good at data structures, so you can create like complex financial dashboards, for example. So that's the first thing that you need to focus on. The second thing that you need to focus on is to filter out the noise and pick the right technologies that you wanna focus on. I know that a lot of people and I know that a lot of clients that came to work with me before they started by themselves, they wanted to become a full stack developer. You know what? The idea of becoming a full stack developer, it's quite exciting, right? Not only you get to build the front and the back end of the product, You're like you build an entire product by yourself. And that's pretty cool because you can get to deploy like your own baby on the internet, right? And you also can make more money, right? You can make maybe 10, 20, 30 grand extra. But the problem with that is, and I've mentioned this in a previous video, is that your complexity grows exponentially because you have to master the back end and the front end and you have to master them together. What happens is that instead of spending, let's say, six to nine months just getting good at front end, you will spend three months there trying to learn some front end and whenever you feel like a little bit comfortable once you have a little bit of concept then you go into the back end you don't have time to marinate in that stack right then you go into the back end and you play around with it a bit you learn how to query a, a database or something like that you build a few endpoints and you think oh i'm a back end developer but the problem is when you try to put them together you'll create something extremely simple and superficial and then people will see that right they will see that you are trying really hard and you look like you have potential, but you don't understand the complexity of building an application and that's going to label you as a beginner, noob, junior. The reality is that nobody wants to work with juniors. That's the, the harsh truth. Like if your toilet breaks down, would you hire someone with no experience that has some videos of him fixing a toilet that he broke by himself at home? Or would you hire someone that has like 15 years of experience uh, cleaning toilets and broken pipes. Obviously you hire the person with more experience, you pay them more because something that you need to understand, like the difference between a junior developer and a senior developer, and this is fucking gold advice and good perspective. A junior is a how, right? You tell the junior what to do and the junior does it. Do this dashboard for me, do this chart for me, fix this bug, uh, fix this drop down, fix this alignment here, right? A junior is a how and they are really cheap because they can be replaced really quick. But a senior developer is a what? A what is like a problem solver in itself. A what can look at a, a piece of code, at a business problem, and can find solutions for today, for next week, and for next month. You need to identify and understand the fact that you are a how, or you are trying to become a really, really good how. And then if your mindset is on point and you have like a growth mindset and abundance and you find like mentors in your career that can help you out you can become also a what and then when you become a what then you can become a full stack developer you can become whatever the hell you want because you'll be extremely valuable for a company and then you'll jump from a regular tax bracket instead of getting paid let's say one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year you will be paid let's say 500 grand because 
the problems that you're solving will bring a massive amount of revenue to a company, you are probably saving the company from uh, wasting money on different things. The third way to level up as a junior developer, you have to compare yourself with others. And I mean it. I know a lot of people, again, a lot of gurus are saying, a lot of motivational gurus are saying this as well, that you should only compare yourself with yourself. And I agree with that 100% because you are pretty much trying to become better than yesterday. But you also need to understand that you are in a marketplace. You're in a marketplace and that means whenever someone puts a job advert up, you are gonna apply, Jimmy is gonna apply, Jenny is gonna apply, and then 500 other people will apply. Even though you are in competition with yourself and you are trying to get better than you were yesterday, there are other people that are doing different things than, to, than you or people that are doing the same things as you and they are getting the same things as you, which is rejections. There are people that are taking trainings, they are going to courses, they are leveling up every single day. There are people that have more experience than you. They have, there are people that have years of commercial experience than you. They, there are people that have like really, really good resumes. And then you are competing with those people. You need to figure out, okay, what is this person that's gonna get this job? What is this person doing better than me, right? And then you can, if you figure out who got the job that you were applying for, you can go to that person and say, hey, teach me what you know. I'll pay you some money and tell me your secrets. I want to figure it out. I don't want to waste my time. Because either way, they're going to pay something. And this gives, takes me to the next point, which is if you do it for free, watching YouTube videos, or if you pay someone like a mentor, to help you out with your career, you're gonna pay. If you are doing the YouTube route, the Udemy route, the blah, 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 you're gonna pay a lot. And you're thinking, okay, what am I gonna pay with? Well, time, right? You're gonna pay with time because time is not coming back. And then you have the idea of cost of opportunity. Right now, if you would have learned code last year and you had a mentor and you were really good and you would have built a portfolio, etc., etc., you'd have been hired already right now. So instead of being at home crying with your wife that you can't pay the bills, you could already be in a position where you make 80, 90 grand a year, 100 grand a year, right? And you'd be making more and more. Now you'd be able to save up for this financial crisis, etc., etc. And then the last thing is the people that are around you matter quite a lot. So if everyone around you is a junior, everyone around you is looking for a job and doesn't have a job because they are untrained, unprepared, well, guess what? You are pretty much the same. So if someone is giving you advice, should you trust them if they don't have the skills that you want, if they are not where you want to be? Well, that's up to you, but I wouldn't trust an obese person with fitness advice, right? They might know everything. They've probably seen all the tutorials. Maybe they even have a certificate, but if they are not where I want to be, I'm not going to listen to them because they don't know what they are talking about. Keep in mind, you need a mentor. You need a community of people that are better than you, that you can learn from, that can pull you up, that can push you and pull you up. These things will actually help you level up as a developer. And here's the deal. I have something really cool for you, which is you can be part of my mentorship program. I have a money back guarantee. What does that mean for you is if I tell you what to do, you do it and you don't get any results, I'm going to give you all your money back after six months. Okay, so pretty much you have no risks involved. You are either getting so good at code that you're gonna get hired or you're gonna get all your money back and then you can pretty much go and learn from Udemy. But I'm pretty much sure that that's not gonna happen because the way I do it is extremely, extremely good. Anyway, I hope I'll see you in the next one. Peace.